Hey everyone, welcome to our walkthrough on using Cromwell with Researcher Workbench featuring the command line tool Chrom Shell. We'll kick things off with an overview of Cromwell and Chrom Shell, followed by a dive into how workflows are executed on Researcher Workbench. Lastly, we'll show a demonstration of using these tools. Taming intricate scientific workflows can be daunting, especially in data heavy fields like genomics. But fear not, Cromwell, a versatile workflow management system, rides to the rescue. Developed by the Broad Institute, it simplifies the execution of monitoring of workflows by coordinating the execution of each task and keeping a watchful eye on the entire process. Whether you're working on a local machine or a massive cloud cluster, Cromwell orchestrates the workflow execution seamlessly. It's great for ensuring workflows run smoothly regardless of the scale at which you operate. We typically use Cromwell for executing little workflows, but it can also accept workflows written in CWL. Now let's zoom in into Cromshell, your gateway to seamless interaction with Cromwell from the terminal. Cromshell is a user-friendly command line interface designed specifically for interacting with a Cromwell server. It simplifies the process of submitting workflows and keeping you in the loop on their progress. Using Cromshell has its benefits. The tool allows you to stay comfortably on the command line to both develop and test your workflows. No more browser hopping required. It also keeps tabs on your workflows, giving real-time updates on their status and progress so you never are left in the dark. Here we have the most frequently used Cromshell commands. These commands are essential for submitting, managing, and monitoring workflows effectively. The primary one being submit. This initiates the submission process for new workflows, allowing it to be processed by the Cromwell server. Status provides the current status of a specific workflow, indicating whether it's running, completed, or if it's failed. The metadata and slim metadata commands retrieves either the complete metadata or a subset of the metadata associated with a workflow, offering detailed information about the execution. The abort command allows you to terminate a running workflow halting its ongoing execution. Validate validates a little workflow, ensuring its adherence to the syntax and structure of our standard workflows. There are several other commands like logs, lists, and counts, which all give detailed information about the workflow that are helpful when troubleshooting. Let's break down how to run your workflow using Cromshell. If you want to run a little workflow, you'll start with a workspace. The workspace has an assigned storage bucket called the workspace storage, which will be used later to store our results. Within the workspace, you will utilize this side panel to create two distinct cloud environments or virtual machines. One virtual machine or VM is a Jupyter notebook and one is a Cromwell app. In the Jupyter notebook, you will interact with the Cromwell app to submit and monitor your workflows. To prepare for executing the workflow, you will upload both the WIDL workflow file and the corresponding input JSON file into the Jupyter Notebook VM. You will run a Cromwell startup script to link these virtual machines together. Once they're linked together, you will use Cromshell in the Jupyter Notebook to submit the configured workflow to the Cromwell server. This initiates the workflow execution process. Cromwell, functioning as the orchestrator, deploys the workflow on Google Cloud Platform resources, which is separate from either of the VMs you've created. When the workflow is completed, Cromwell ensures the storage of the workflow logs and output in the designated workspace bucket, thus concluding the workflow execution cycle. Next, we'll do a demonstration of running Cromshell on Researcher Workbench to run a workflow using Crom a Cromwell server. If you wanted to follow along, you can clone a version of the uh, notebook that I will be running. You'll find this notebook in the featured workspaces in Researcher Workbench. To get there, click on the hamburger menu on the top left, then click on Featured Workspaces on the left panel. Once you head over to the Researcher Workbench workspace library of featured workspaces, um, you'll spot the workspace. It's titled How to Run 
Whittles using Cromwell in Researcher Workbench. So what you'll want to do is um, duplicate or clone a version of this workspace for your own. Here is my duplicate version of the workspace. The first thing we'll want to do in our workspace is create the virtual machines for our Cromwell application or our Cromwell server and also create our uh, virtual machine VM for our Jupyter notebook. You'll do that again at the on the right hand panel. So here uh, clicking on the um, Cromwell icon I'll create a Cromwell cloud environment just by clicking start. We also want to uh, create our Jupyter Notebook environment um, with the, def the default settings is fine. So you'll click create. Looks like our Cromwell cloud environment is set up and ready. And we're just waiting for our Jupyter Notebook. In the meantime, we can visit the analysis tab to look at the notebooks available to us. Uh, and here we have two notebooks. We're running workflows using Cromwell and validate VCFs with Cromwell. The notebook we're focused on is running workflow using Cromwell. I'll click that. Okay, so here we have our notebook um, opened. Our Cromwell app for VM and our Jupyter Notebook VM are ready. We'll get started with this notebook. I'm going to run this notebook in playground mode. I'll click on that. Now that we have our notebook open, this tutorial notebook on running Cromwell, um, at the very top, we have a list of the things that you'll be doing in the notebook. Let's go over them really quickly. So first we'll be setting up the notebook to run with Cromwell, meaning we'll be executing that script that links this, this notebook virtual machine with our Cromwell virtual machine. Next we'll import and set up our Whittle. So we'll just, yeah, we're importing our Whittle and input JSON. Next we'll execute that Whittle, after which we'll uh, run some Chrome shell commands like checking the status of our workflow, checking the logs, getting the metadata, um, other commands to perform some debugging steps, some practicing debugging. And lastly, we'll look at the outputs and calculating workflow cost. Um, there's a bit of information, a lot of details in this notebook. Feel free to run through it on your own time. Okay. The first step here is to set up our environment of start time and also our workspace buckets associated with this workspace. So we'll execute that. We'll list our workspace bucket. Next, we will run the script that links our Jupyter Notebook virtual environment with our Cromwell. And this is the script here. If you are creating your own um, Jupyter Notebook, and you wanted this uh, script in your notebook, you can access the script by going over to snippets and clicking on all of us Cromwell setup Python snippets. This has the code easily accessible to you. So if we were to click on this, let's click on it, that script will be automatically added to your notebook. Okay, I'm going to delete that now since we don't need it. We already have one. This notebook already came with one. So I'll go ahead and execute this. Okay, once that's finished running, we'll move on to the next uh, section, which is getting the latest version of Chrome Shell. So here we're installing Chrome Shell or updating Chrome Shell um, using this pip command. Once that's done, we're going to confirm what version we have. Let's just make sure it's Chrome Shell 2 and higher. So it's Chrome Shell 2.11. It's great. Uh, we'll move on to the next section, which is loading our Whittle and JSON files that we want to execute. There's a few ways to do this. You can upload the file from your local machine or copy the file from a cloud, um, a cloud storage environment using GSUtil. 
or you can copy the contents and paste it into a code cell in the section. And in this tutorial, we'll be following along with option three. So this, is, this has already been done for us. The contents of a whittle has been added to the cell and this will create a um, file called validate underscore VCF whittle that we'll use in the tutorial. Let's run this. So now there should be a file within our Jupyter notebook called uh, validate underscore VCF whittle. And this is the whittle uh, name or the whittle that we'll be executing. Along with the whittle, uh, we also have an input JSON file that we'll create here as well. Next section is loading input files. Um, th this isn't uh, strictly necessary for all workflows, but for this tutorial workflow, it is. So we'll go ahead and execute them. Once our inputs have been uh, loaded, along with our whittle and input JSON, now we're ready to execute our whittle. We're using Chrome Shell to execute or submit our, our workflow. Cromwell will send our whittle along with our JSON input over to our Cromwell server, where Cromwell will execute the, um, the whittle on Google's backend. To submit a workflow to Cromwell using Chrome Shell, to submit a workflow, you'll use this Chrome Shell command. It goes like this. First, you add in Chrome Shell, then the Chrome Shell subcommand, which is submit, followed by the whittle workflow file that you want to execute along with its input JSON file. So we're going to go ahead and press enter on the cell. Okay, so once you've submitted your workflow, Chrome Shell, if everything goes well, Chrome Shell will um, give you this green turtle and the status of submit. It will also give you an ID for the specific, that specific workflow submission. And if you wanted to check on the status of this workflow you've just submitted, you will use this ID. In the next section, we'll save the submission ID into a variable so that we can um, reference it again later. It just make, makes things easier running the Chrome Shell status commands. So I'm going to press enter here. And now our submission ID, 28, et cetera, is saved into this variable called submission ID. So here it's stated again. All right. In the next section, we're using Chrome Shell to check the status of our workflow. To check the status, you'll um, use the status command and then followed by the workflow ID. Okay, looks like our workflow has completed and you can tell this by the green turtle along with the, with the status of it being succeeded. The next cell offers a useful Python function that runs the Chrom shell status command on the submitted workflow repeatedly every 20 seconds until it receives a successful status. Since our workflow has already succeeded, we won't run it, but as you can see from its previous run, the function will output the submission status of running repeatedly until it finally receives a succeeded status from the Chrome Shell status command for that particular workflow. Here are some other Chrome Shell workflow operations you might be interested in. Uh, one would be validating your Whittle or JSON file. So if you wanted to check whether or not your Whittle that you're executing is in the correct format, you can run Chrome Shell validate on the Whittle along with its input. And Chrome Shell will check for any um, issues with it. Um, overall, our workflow was successful. There are some other, there are some things we can improve on as mentioned here by Chrome Shell's validation command. There's also the abort command if you wanted to abort the submission for any reason. So Chrome Shell abort and then the workflow ID. 
um, would be added here. The next section is getting your workflow metadata from Chrom Shell. So when you execute a workflow, um, Cromwell will record a lot of detailed information about that execution. If you want to retrieve that information, perhaps for debugging or troubleshooting purposes, you can do so by running Chrom Shell metadata and the, the workflow submission ID. So here for that particular workflow, we have information such as the log file for that submission, start time and end time for the workflow, the inputs used for particular tasks, um, the input um, runtime attributes, so what CPU was requested, what Docker was used, um, the memory usage, or what memory was requested, and all that information are specified in that metadata. The next section covers the logs and outputs command for Chrom Shell. So if you wanted to look at the logs for a particular workflow, you'll execute this command that uses the command logs. This will display the Google path for that log file. So for our workflow called validate, uh, the log file for that workflow is mentioned here. If you wanted to look at the outputs for this workflow submission, you'll run Chrom Shell list outputs in the, the workflow submission ID. For this particular workflow, there aren't any outputs generated. So Chrom, Chrom Shell here is um, indicating no outputs was found for that uh, workflow for that submission. The next section titled look at the workspace bucket gives ways to explore the folder in the workspace bucket where Cromwell keeps the log and output files for a specific workflow submission. The first part builds and shows the expected Google bucket path for the workflow submission folder. Then the next part uses Google's command line tool, JSUtil, to list what's inside a folder. If you wanted to see the contents of any of the files listed in that folder within the notebook, you can use the command JSUtil cat to print what's inside, as demonstrated in the next cell. The last part of the tutorial notebook covers figuring out how much it costs to run a submitted workflow. First, it uses wget to get a Python script that estimates the cost of running a workflow. Then it uses Chrome Shell to get the metadata of the submitted workflow and saves it into a file. Lastly, it runs the cost estimation script using the metadata file. The script looks at when the workflow started and ended, as well as the info about computing resources used by the workflow. The script outputs a good approximation of the cost for running of the workflow. This concludes the Chrome Shell demo. If you are following along with your own workspace, don't forget to stop or delete the cloud environment once you're done to save on cost. In this video, we covered slides describing Cromwell and Chrome Shell and demonstrated how to run a Whittle workflow on Researcher Workbench. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.